Hello and welcome to our fourth video covering mental models. Today we are going to be looking at additive and multiplicative systems. A system is anything that transforms an input into an output. This could be a machine, it could be a business, or it could be an event. It just transforms inputs to outputs. And we're going to look at the differences between an additive system and a multiplicative system. To get us in the right mindset, we are going to do a quick mental exercise. In this mental exercise, the numbers are arbitrary, but they represent the output we get from a system. So we are assigning a value to the output that we receive. So let's take a look at our first system. And in this system, we have five plus five, which equals 10. Now this is clearly an additive system. If we turn the system into a multiplicative system, we now have an output of 25. So this shows that you can get a higher output with multiplicative systems. However, we have a higher degree of risk with multiplicative systems. So let's take a look at this. 5 plus 0. Something has gone wrong in our system. This component, which was previously giving us a value of 5, has stopped working and now produces a value of 0. In an additive system, we now have an output of 5. However, let's take a look at our multiplicative system. 5 times 0 equals 0. So you can see that an additive system offers lower returns and lower rewards, whereas a multiplicative system offers higher returns and greater risk. A failure of a multiplicative system can bring the whole system down. Right. Now let's take a look at some examples of additive and multiplicative systems. We'll start off with additive, and my favourite example of a additive system is a party. And let's say our party is made up of um, uh, drinks, we have food, we have music, so we have a bouncy castle, we have a karaoke machine, and the overall output of our party is 40. Each one of these components adds value to our overall system. However, if something goes wrong, that doesn't mean the entire party is ruined. So for example, let's say our, our food is burnt. This now um, becomes zero. Well, it does make our party not so good. It goes from a 40 to a 30. However, it doesn't mean the whole party is ruined and people don't have as good of a time. They go from 40 to 30 in terms of satisfaction, but it definitely doesn't ruin the whole system altogether. We can contrast this with a multiplicative system. And my favorite example of this kind of system is a Formula One car. So a Formula One car, you have an engine, you have a chassis, you have a driver, you have wheels, and all of these are interlinked components, which is why they're multiplicative. However, a Formula One car also does have wing mirrors, and if a wing mirror falls off the car, that doesn't impact the rest of the system. It makes it less good but it doesn't bring it down on itself. So it is um, quite um, likely in the real world that you have mixed systems. Overall, this is mainly a multiplicative system, but that doesn't mean it can't have additive components. So the overall value of our Formula One car as, as a system is 10,005. But as I mentioned earlier, let's say the wing mirror falls off, our system value is now 10,000. We can continue our race without a wing mirror. 
it's a slight inconvenience, but it's not going to end the race altogether. However, what happens if we have an engine failure? So this tent becomes a zero, and that means that the overall output is zero. Of course, we can't carry the race, uh, carry on with the race in these conditions, and this highlights the um, reward you have for lots of multipliers in your system. You have uh, 10 times 10 times 10, which, which quickly compounds to a high value. But at the same time, just throwing a zero into the mix can bring the whole thing down. So let's take a look at some strategies for mitigating these risks. So the advantage of an additive system is that it offers lower returns and lower risk. However, when we are planning a party, each additional thing we add to the party requires more time and effort. We don't have anything that produces a high value really quickly. If we wanted to get this up, this 30 up to a 300, we'd have to keep on adding more and more things. What we're really looking to do is to increase the value of the system by deliberately introducing a multiplier. So currently, our party is a 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 5. And if we want to introduce a multiplier, we can't have an additive mindset where we're just adding something more. So hiring a clown, for example, that might give us another plus 10, but it doesn't increase the overall value of the existing system. Something that um, could increase the value of the overall system is, let's say we have good weather. So a good weather, arguably, could make everything so much more fun. Let's take a look at our bouncy castle, for example. In the rain, that might not be much fun, but in a nice um, summer's day, that increases the value. Overall, every part of the party, you could say, is better if we have good weather. So our 30 becomes a 60. A second strategy for managing these risks is to look for multipliers of one. So let's go on to another example, and this is a factory. And in our factory, we have um, 10 times 10 times one. And let's say that's a, um, that's a machine producing components. That's another machine that um, does work on those components once they're finished. And that one is a button someone has to press to move a conveyor belt. This is a multiplier of one because it doesn't add any value to our system. However, if that person forgets to push that button, then the whole system fails and that one becomes a zero. So the um, system completely fails. And what the um, strategy to do in this case is to use automation. So you really want to get rid of that part of your system. 10 times 10 times one is 100. 10 times 10 is also 100. That is something that adds no value, but it does introduce risk. So that's a key strategy of managing multipliers is to automate them so they can't fail. You need to um, consider the trade-off between risk and reward. If you have a multiplier of one, automate it, no value ever added. If it's a multiplier of two, it does actually double the value of your system. So in that case, you need to think about, are we worth um, doubling our system and having risk? Or should we just get, up, get rid of the risk altogether? And that's just going to depend on your individual circumstances and the system in question. Our third strategy for managing risk is to compartmentalize our risk. So let's take a look at a online retailer. 
and an online retailer is comprised of a front-end system, the website customers use to make purchases, and a back-end system, the warehouse that fulfills the goods that consumers purchased. And let's say an on online retailer is just starting out and they have a front-end system of five, a back-end system of five, and they have one server managing the whole thing. If this server goes wrong, then neither the front-end system or back-end system can work. But what if we had two servers to compartmentalize risk? So instead of um, um, this becoming a zero and then the whole thing becoming a zero, we have five times one plus five times one, that equals 10. Previously, if our one server failed, we would go to zero. But in this situation, we've now got two servers. We have a server for our front end and a server for our back end. And if something happens to go wrong with our front end server, we have five times zero, and then we have plus five times one for our back end, and that equals five. So it's not good that our server has gone down. This means our retail website is no longer able to accept customer orders. However, our backend system is working perfectly fine and we can fulfill the orders that have previously been placed. So when we're running at full functionality, we have a 10. With one server, the whole thing fails and goes to zero. But if we have two servers, we've compartmentalized our risk and therefore we switch from a 10 system to a five system. And that is obviously much better than zero value at all. And that concludes our video on additive and multiplicative systems. I really hope that the maths doesn't put anyone off. You just really need to remember that additive systems offer lower returns and lower risk. Multiplicative systems offer higher returns, but with that comes higher risk. And we have three key strategies. Strategy one, is we can introduce a multiplier to increase the value of an additive system. Strategy two, remove multipliers that don't add any value. And strategy three is to compartmentalize multipliers so their risk is contained within one particular part of the system rather than the whole system altogether. If there are any comments on this, just drop them down below and I will answer your questions and don't forget to subscribe to see future videos. Thank you for watching.